from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. On today's episode, Bo Levi Mitchell discusses starting the final game of the season. Coach O breaks down a couple moves on the depth chart against Montreal, and Brian Simmons joins the show to break down tomorrow's game, the Tie Cats award winners, and more. It's Friday, October 27, 2023, and you're listening to Tie Cats today. It was a rainy walkthrough at Tim Hortons Field today. The Tie Cats getting in those final preparations for tomorrow's final regular season game against the Montreal Alouettes. And this is a game where we're going to see a few guys in different positions and a couple guys making their first starts of the season the Ticats released the depth chart and there's some notable changes to what we would normally see and the biggest one being that James Butler will not dress for this game he'll be getting some much needed rest for the playoffs and stepping in in his place will be Tyon Fleet Davis and this is a guy I'm really excited to see he looked excellent in training camp he's been with the team throughout the year and has been in that waiting room if you will behind the Ticats star running back James Butler but with Butler out this game will give Fleet Davis a chance to really show what he's got and get in that first career CFL start Darrell Walker will step in at the slot. Omar Bayless has returned from injury. He'll also start at the slot on defense. Both Jamal and Jagera Davis will start at defensive end on each side. Davis Vereen will make his first start at the corner. We will also likely see Carthel Flowers Lloyd, that monster on the special teams, get some time in at the Sam. And likely we'll see several other moving pieces all throughout the lineup. The starting QB will once again be Bo Levi Mitchell. And today, Coach O spoke about what he expects from Bo and dealing with some rainy October weather. Perfect. We prayed for rain and we got it. It's unbelievable. It's, it was awesome. Uh, no, it, you know that's what the, that's what fall is. You know, and the only way to prepare for stuff like that is to experience some of those days. So uh, nothing changed. We didn't shorten anything. We went out there, handled our business, and now we're in here. What are you looking for from Bo in, in this game coming up here? Yeah, I just I think at the end of the day, we're looking at this game as another opportunity to get better, to work on things that we need to work on internally. This is. Uh, not just another game. This game's on the schedule. Um, while it may have, I don't even term it whatever you want, it may have meaningless ramifications as far as the standings or shuffling of that, but not as far as internally and things that we need to get better on. So it's not just what I would like to see from Bo. It's what I want to see collectively from everybody in things that we're emphasizing. We want to see those transfer on game day. And Fleet Davis is going to be going in a running back. What have you seen from him this season and, and being in that waiting room and, and now getting an opportunity to, to get in the game here? Excited to see. Yeah. You know, it's been a while since he had a couple of carries. I think it was against Toronto. Um, and so, you know, people, all they want is opportunity. And so this is an opportunity for, for him to go out there and not just play, but, you know, you want to play well. So... We always talk about being ready for your opportunity, and, and we'll see how it works out. But there's a guy who, on scout team, he's, you know, he's got lots of energy. That hasn't changed since we brought him over at McMaster when he showed up. And so you know, this, is his, this is his chance. So I'm excited for him. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, over, yeah, I'll have a 5,000-foot overview of things. But I think specifically the coordinators have things that they'll want to see. So, yeah, I would say as the game unfolds, there might be some specific things that we need to see more of. Or, um, you know, let's see if this guy can side adjust this. Let's see if we can make this check on the field. Uh, those are more specific things, uh, fine fixtures and details that might get ironed out. But it's hard to prepare for those because you don't know which ones. That's why we just have these preset things that, you know, some of it's our play calls that are already planned, that there's things we're, we're going to get some, some answers uh, early on that way. Yeah, I think, I think it's up to individuals. I mean, nobody's trying to put bad tape out there, whether it doesn't matter who we're playing right. and whether you play them back-to-back weeks or not. You know, um, you know, we always like to say you are what you put on tape. And the thing about football is nobody wins all the time. Like, yeah, you want to win your one-on-one matchups, but everybody gets put on their butt. Everybody's had a pancake. Some people win more than others, but nobody wins 100% of the time. Um, they're, they're individual battles. So, um, you know, I think, yeah, there's probably that game within the game. When you're covering the same person, there's probably a lot of chatter that goes on out there. Um, but at the end of the day, the, it's about, you know, doing what you can do collectively so that you can win the game, not just your one-on-one battle. That was Coach O, and he discussed that he's looking at this game as an opportunity to get better and see what this group can do collectively on game day. And Bo Levi Mitchell will get another opportunity to gain some reps and stay in rhythm here heading into the playoffs. Bo spoke to me today about continuing to improve heading into Montreal. 
Um, you know, I think in our team in this locker room, the message never changes on what we are trying to do going on to a game. And you know, for myself included, uh, I'm going to go out there and play the best I can, continue to try to improve going to the playoffs, um, work on the things I need to work on, and improve on the things that um, that I've been doing well, and uh, just keep getting hot going into the last game. How important would it be to to go into that playoff game having just beaten this team? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's very important. I, I mean, I know the. You know, W doesn't matter in the standings right now, um, but it matters in, in this locker room. It matters um, in their locker room. You know, it's uh, we're going to go out there and try to win this game uh, no matter what it takes. Uh, play good football. Play playoff football. That's the biggest thing is if you're going to make mistakes in the playoffs, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lose your game. So um, make sure that we're playing the type of playoff football we need to play in order to win. Just wondering what you've thought about Fleet Davis and, and him getting the start in this game, and what you've been able to see from him throughout the year. Yeah, he kind of reminds me of a young Don Jackson. You know, he's a guy that brings energy to the huddle. Um, he's going to run differently than than JB. You know, he uh, he has his own his own style of running. Uh, he's great out of the backfield catching the ball. Um, he does a he does a great job at doing all things, and I think uh, you know he's a young guy. He's, he's still learning. He's going to. He's going to have his mistakes, but he's going to have a lot of good plays. He's going to have, have us kind of fired up out there on the field. Um, it'll be my job just to keep him calm, keep him uh, locked in and ready to go. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, you know, maybe for, you know, coaches, you know, quarterbacks, they, you know, winning record kind of thing and, and worrying about, you know, being 500 rather than a losing season. You know, obviously there's a different connotation to that when it comes to later on. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you go out and you're trying to win a football game. It doesn't matter what the, it does to your record in 500. It's just we want to go out there and um, make them feel like they're not 3-0 and against us and they're going to come to that game super confident. We want to go out there and make them feel like, all right, yeah, we, we beat them the first two times, but you know they got us the last time and, and let them have the excuse of like, oh, yeah, but we didn't play some of our players or whatnot. Um, you know, let them worry about that and let us worry about ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think I've been in these situations a lot where you're kind of playing the team that you might play in the first game of the playoffs or you possibly play in the final um, or a team you might see in a Grey Cup. And your thought is, like everybody knows, like it's not a secret. We're going to go out there and try certain things against them we want to try. Um, they're going to do the same to us. And, and maybe defensively, you know, they want to pressure us all day. Maybe they want to drop nine all day. Maybe they don't want me, because I haven't played them yet, to see anything that they do, right? So um, I think, you know, what Scott has just kind of prepped me on is, is be ready for anything and everything. You know, you're a vet. See with your eyes, trust your eyes, get out there, let the ball rip. Um, you know, if we make mistakes this game, learn from them in the game, move past them so that we can continue to move the offense throughout the, the game and, and use that to improve for next week. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, a lot of what playoff football is is handling noise. It's understanding that you're in somebody else's house and it's obviously harder to win in somebody else's house typically. Um, so, you know, Vubenzela, Vubenzuela, however you say those things, the horns. Um, that's something that if you're a young guy, you haven't ever heard that. You know, the, the things you hear in a soccer stadium, like you're, they're going to have those in Montreal. So you've got to be ready for that, prepared for that. Um, that's something that we have prepared for and we are ready for. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice thing, I think, for young guys that maybe haven't played a lot or played against them or played in their stadium and might play next week. It gives them the ability to familiarize themselves with the surroundings that they're going to be in for a, a high stakes playoff game. I'm wondering if I can get your take on Taylor winning most outstanding rookie this year for the team. Yeah, it's very well deserved, man. He, uh, I think we, we've had some a lot of rookies step up for us, um, you know. But to be a guy to, to get to hype up Taylor, I can tell you that, and it's something I've said a couple times up here on this stage, is um, you know he is what you want out of a quarterback. He is a guy that shows up early. He's a guy that cares for his teammates. He's a guy that tries to get other guys prepped. If he makes a mistake, he's going to study that and do everything he can not to make that mistake again. Um, he played beyond his years, without a doubt, when he came in. I mean, we weren't in playoff contention. I mean, I guess you always are in the CFL, um, you know, till the end of the season. But it didn't look like we were where we wanted to be for playoff contention. You know, and then Taylor came in and led this team and, and improved the entire time he played. Um, you know, didn't try to do anything too crucial in the beginning, didn't try to make too many mistakes or force too many balls. but. Then you saw his athleticism, some of his playmaking ability, some of his accuracy, things that he has, uh, quick release that has you know gotten him to this point. You saw that start to come out towards those later games, and and as soon as that does, all of a sudden now you start to see his personality, you start to see that confidence that he kind of carries. And uh, I mean, you know, I could I could talk all day about him. That's my little brother. He's uh, he's been fun to watch. He's, he's always fun to be around. And uh, you know, me, him, Matt, Kai, we just you know love our QB room and have a great time.
All right, joining me now to discuss this upcoming game with the Montreal Alouettes, these awards, and so much more is Brian Simmons. Brian, a busy week for the Thai Cats. Lots of exciting announcements being made. But let's start off with the Thai Cats awards. The most outstanding player for the Thai Cats is Tim White. How, what do you think about the decision? I think Tim's pretty deserving, but what do you think of him getting the honor? Um, honestly, I think they could have went, you know, a few ways with the decision, but honestly, I don't see yeah. an issue with it at all. Um, I think he had a very solid season, and it's it's challenging to have a, a productive all-star season when your opponents expect that of you, and they expected that of him this season. So I think it's well-deserving, but like I said, you know, it also could have went to Butler as well, you know, but um, we yeah. know, I mean, you know, the, what they say, chicks love the long ball. <laughs> so them catching those deep passes, they're probably a little bit more favorable with the voters and fans. Yeah, and he is first in the league in receiving yards right now. And and I think the biggest stat when you look at it is he's eighth or seventh or eighth in the league in in reception. So it just goes to show how big those receive or those receptions he's made this season are. And yeah, a worthy guy. I think James Butler also, you can make an argument for him. The most outstanding defensive player, I think you can make an argument for a lot of people, but it's Simone, Lo Simone Lawrence. I mean, you look at the season this guy's had to, to bounce back from the injuries and and then to do what he's done this year, I, I think he's very deserving. But what do you think about Simone getting that award? Oh, well, honestly, I, if it were up to me, it could have went. I think Simone is well deserving of it. Um, mm -hmm. I also think as someone who did have the opportunity to play in his 30s, it's very it's harder as you get older, man. It really is. Um, <laughs> the recovery time is what is what really I find the most challenging. Because I've had people ask, often ask me, do you think you can still play? I'm like, yeah, I can give you a game that I need a month to recover now. You know, because it's, <laughs> it's physical. But with that said, it just really shows the work that he's been putting in because you don't play that long at that high of a level if you're not doing everything you can outside of that stadium, you know, to stay there. So it shows his dedication to the game. Do you have any memories playing against Simone or, or, or any times where you can think of where, where Simone may have given, given one of your teams a little bit of an issue? Uh, you know, I, actually, I've only I've only played against Simone actually once, like being on the field. And it was it was funny, man. It was, it was comical because I know Simone on a personal level. So we're literally joking during the game. He talked a smack to all the other guys. But, you know, joking with me. But one thing I'll say with him, and I always respected his quickness. A uh, very athletic guy, very shifty. And those are the kind of guys, you know, I know he wants to get me off my balance. So with Simone, I was always just be patient, you know, be extremely patient with him. Very athletic guy. And, and definitely one of the best trash talkers in the, in the CFL. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, go to talk. a guy you know very well. You've told me a story about when he first showed up to camp and how impressed you were by him. But Brandon Revenberg, once again, named mm -hmm. the most outstanding O-lineman. But, but what have you seen from him this season, and, and what can you say about his consistency throughout this year? Uh, for this season, you know, I've just it's been nice to follow him throughout his career and just, you know, see him become a veteran. You know, I can tell all the guys on that team, not just the offensive linemen, they look up to him and – He's one of those guys that leads by example. You know, he's not a big, you know, raha type of guy. And I, I think that's just the that's that's kind of like the heart of what Hamilton is when you think about it. Just, you know, a blue blue collar city that, you know, just going to work hard and get it done. So I'm uh, extremely happy for him. And honestly, he should win it for the entire league, in my opinion. But we'll see what happens. I think he's definitely one of the top candidates for that one. And now Stavros Katsantonis, most outstanding Canadian. I think you could even make an argument he was one of the most outstanding defensive players this season. Yep. But, but as a Canadian and, and just to see him and what he's done and how he's propelled his career this season, what do you think of Stavros for getting the most outstanding Canadian and, and what he's been able to do? Oh, I, I think it's well deserved too. Like and I agree with what you said, Brayden. He could have been a nominee for most outstanding Canadian, uh, as well as Leonard, as well as Sales. You know, they had a lot of government defense making plays, but uh, I'm definitely proud of him. And um, hopefully, you know, going forward, you know, he will be considered for more of just a defensive player of the year, and not just a Canadian. But yeah, he he's played well. I actually enjoy watching him play. You know, I enjoy watching him play. He's just so shifty out there, and and he's also another guy who 
when you talk to him, he's so articulate about the game and, and about every little thing. And, and he's, he's more than, more than happy to share his abnormal journey to this position with you and, and, and very deserving. The final award winner, and this one I think is pretty obvious, most outstanding rookie, Taylor Powell. Look at what he's done this year yeah. and coming from college and to just be thrown in is starting his first game against the Toronto Argonauts at Tim Hortons Field. I mean, the guy is poised under pressure and he proved that this season. But what do you think of Taylor Powell and his season he had? Oh, man, like I said, Taylor, unlike most quarterbacks that come into this league, he's a true rookie, you know, and with that because a lot of guys, they come in here with some kind of pro experience. You know, it's a true rookie. It's hard to do. I mean, he's coming from another game, another wild style of playing, playing with bigger fields and stuff. So me personally, I thought he did a great job to be a true rookie. And I do think his the future of his career is promising. It really is because he's just going to get better. The guy's been around a Hall of Fame quarterback, other successful quarterbacks, um, other great play callers in this league. So I really uh, – I, I could see maybe – I'm not going to say next season, but maybe the following season I could see this guy making some noise to get a starting position in this league. For sure. And, and as a true rookie, like right out of college, he was at Eastern Michigan last year, and here he is making the impact in the CFL. This is the last one I want to talk to you about when it comes to awards. Going elsewhere for this one, but there will be a new MOP this year for the CFL because Brady Oliveira was chosen by the Winnipeg Blue Bombers instead of Zach Kalaros. So that leaves the MOP discussion open. Who do you think now is the front runner for MOP in the CFL this season with with uh, Zach Kalaros out of the race? I, I, I think I think Brady will get it. Yeah, I do. Okay, uh, I think he will because. Uh, I mean, let me see his stats. He's almost touched fifteen hundred yards. Yeah. I don't know if he'll. Do they have any more games left? Or are they I, done I believe he's. Time? I believe he's done. But yeah, I think he just okay. touched fifteen hundred yards. Yeah, and with that said, I think the last person to do that was like John Cornish, yeah. like a while ago, like ten years ago. So that's impressive to me. And then not only the run. Have you seen how many receiving yards? He's yeah, it's, like, it's crazy. <laughs> so I mean, me personally, I I would probably give it to him. But um, I could see some people. I mean, I don't think BC nominated him for the most outstanding, but uh, Betts, their defensive lineman, yeah. he could also be considered as well for those sack numbers. Yeah, and, and I mean, there's so many guys. You, you, you can't ignore Chad Kelly. I mean, what he's been able to do mm -hmm. this season and, and Vernon Adams, and there's a lot of guys. But yeah. I would like to see Brady Oliveira if, if it's not a tie cat because that's a Canadian getting the award. I don't remember the last time that happened, but, but definitely an interesting race with Zach out of the race. Let's tr shift here to Montreal. The tie cats have a couple pretty big games we were talking about it last week but this upcoming matchup they're taking them on and and they have Bo Levi Mitchell starting the game now I think they want to see him get in some reps but what do you think of the decision to give Bo that first half or whatever it is they're planning on giving him I think it's the right decision to make uh, if I were in charge I would play him the first half and let him get that game time experience because I mean you're going to be right back there you know so it's like why not you know, let him get an appetizer view of the menu. You know, let's see what's going on. And honestly, I, I just think he's looked great every time he's been, you know, in since his most recent return. Uh, so I totally agree with that decision. I don't think there's no, no wrong doing in that. Going up against Montreal, they do have a pretty solid defense. But but what do you need to keep in mind against this Montreal defense on offense? And and I'm not saying play scared because uh, Hamilton wants to win this game, but, but protect yourself against Montreal. Well, ask me ask you this, Braden. Do you know what Montreal's plan is as far as playing their starters? I think it's going to be a lot of starters, but you're you're not going to see them play the whole game. I think it's going to kind of be a rotation by the looks of what what both teams are kind of doing here. But yeah, mm -hmm. I think you'll see a, a lot of starters, but not the entire time. Well, I, I kind of this game I imagine is probably going to be like a, a hybrid version of a preseason game. I would imagine. And uh, with that said. Um, I mean, I would just go out there and, you know, if you're playing for a half, give it your all for that half. You know, one thing about the game of football, and I was fortunate enough to have a career where I didn't get injured a lot, but I noticed guys who always were worried about injury or it was in the back of their heads. It's like, I'm not saying that they got injured more, but I just noticed they were in the tub a lot more than me. And I just feel like you can't be hesitant out there. Like, you got to let it go. So... For the guys that's playing to have, and, you know, send those guys a message. You know, let them know, hey, this is what's going to happen to you again next week. Even if they lose the game, they could lose the game but still have a physical, you know, make a physical impression. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I have a random question for you, Brian. You've played in Montreal. Yeah. This probably wouldn't have affected you as much as it would have affected the DBs and the receivers, but how much do those tapered end zones affect the game? Is that Does that affect anything? You know, they have that track going around, and I believe their end zones yeah. are cornered off a little bit more, but, but how much does that affect the pass game, if any, when you're in the end zone? I mean, I, I would imagine it does affect it some. Yeah. I mean, but – it's like you're working with a 20-yard end zone. So <laughs> it's like if I take away three feet, you'll be fine, you know. But, I mean, you can ask a receiver that, and they might give you a totally different response yeah. to quarterback. I mean, but just from a lineman, it's like you got 20 yards of work with me. <laughs> yeah, you got enough room back there. I get it. I get it. One yeah. guy who won't be playing, and we, we found that out last night, is that James Butler won't be playing. I think we kind of expected that. But there is a guy who's going in for him that I'm actually really excited to see, and that's – Fleet Davis. So this is a guy we saw a lot in training camp, and he was very impressive. He has legs like tree trunks. When he runs the ball, he looks like he can go forever. But is that a guy you're kind of excited to see? Maybe a little new look at running back? You know, you know, this is probably going to be his only game of the season, but are you excited to see a new RB, and, and especially to give JB that little break for before playoffs here? Oh, most yeah. definitely. Like He definitely needs and he deserves that break, talking about JB. Yeah. Uh, anyone with a name like Fleet, I want to see you play. You know, especially <laughs> if you're a running back. You know, running with the, the ball, fleeing away. So yeah, uh, I'm 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 excited to see him play. And like I said, uh, I've never been in this position before, but I always say guys that are getting opportunities to play like that, you're you're always evaluating. You know, I used to have a sticker in my locker that would say you're all you're always being evaluated. You're always being evaluated. So it's an opportunity for him to showcase for Hamilton and. Even if that doesn't work out, the showcase for whoever might get his film. So I'm excited to watch him play. And I'm sure the offensive linemen, they're probably excited, you know, to have a different, you know, style of back in there. Just, you know, something different. In your opinion, who has the better name for their position group? Fleet Davis as a running back or Legio for the kicker? I, I mean, they're both pretty good. That's, yeah, that's, man, that's tough. I mean, I I probably have to give it to Legio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, the leg. I mean, Legio kicker. I, it's almost like his parents, you, like or, you wanna, or his ancestors, knew he was going to do this. I have something funny for you, uh, Braden. My high school kicker, his last name was Shanklin. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. But, but he's a very good kicker. Very good kicker. But his last name was Shanklin, though. Oh no! Yeah, I'm sure a lot of the other opposing teams use that a lot of use that for fuel, definitely to get in his head a little bit. Final thing I want to talk about, it's not even football related at all. Brian is Shaggy has been announced as the awards performer, so he'll be performing after the awards at the OLG stage. He'll also be doing some stuff at the Avalon Theater, being involved in the CFL awards. But I mean, Shaggy is a pretty interesting name to be joining this CFL festivities. Are you excited for Shaggy? Oh yeah, he actually uh he had a lot of hits like back in the day. I know he's still making music. Oh yeah, I know in the early two thousand he had some some nice uh hits. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool that he coming out and you know being a part of the CFL celebration and stuff. Uh, I look forward to hearing about it. I actually have a very embarrassing story that I wasn't going to share, but I think I'm going to share it now. When I was <laughs> seven years old, my mom used to put me in these things called air bands where you'd have to lip sing a song from your favorite artist. And then mm -hmm. you would you would get judged and uh, you'd win 50 bucks or whatever it was. So I chose to sing Shaggy Scent of a Woman when I was eight years old. And I told the girl I wasn't nervous. She went up on stage. She said, oh, Braden's going to sing this song. He's not nervous. And sure enough, as soon as that music hit, I stared at my mom and I just gave her the death <laughs> stare and I ran right off the stage. And we have it on VHS. We watch it once a year. It's it's miserable. But but an interesting, but a funny little Shaggy story for me. And I'm a big fan of Shaggy, so I'm excited to see him. But Brian, once again, that is it's, it's great to have you on the show. Probably didn't have to share that story, but as always, a uh, pleasure to have you on today, Brian. Hey, I'm glad you shared it, Brian. It was good to hear. I can, <laughs> I can, I can actually image that in my mind right now, spotlight and all. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Brian, you take care, man, and uh, hopefully, you know, you can watch a good game tomorrow.